Summit. We're leaving town, baby. Hi, I'm Bonnie Francis, and we're here to talk about the Senior Summit, which will be happening May 18th at the 4 H Fairgrounds from 9 to 2. And I have with me today Bob Brookman, who is with Bright Star Home Care. And mm-hmm. I wanted to find out what services you offer. What is Bright Star? Bright Star Home Care provides assistance in the home for a number of different uh, types of individuals, primarily seniors. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what we do is really we help people, what is called age in place, okay? So people who are beginning to maybe lose some of their abilities in certain areas or whether they have a sickness or an injury or whatever, they may need assistance in their home to be able to stay in the home and to be able to age at home and continue to live their life. So what we do is we provide nurses' aids into their home but we're different than most home care companies in that we also have nurses on staff and, uh, and therapists and things like that. So, and we also not just take care of seniors, but we also take care of children, little children uh, mm-hmm. and babies right up to uh, someone who's, you know, 100 years old. So everyone wants to be able to, uh, to not just age in place, but be able to recover from an illness and an injury. Uh, we take care of people or kids who have disabilities, um, maybe uh, uh, individuals who have long-term issues, like uh, maybe they were in an accident, they have quadri- quadriplegics, things like that. So anything, any type of home care uh, assistance that has to do with health care that can be done in the home, that's what we do. Um, you mentioned nurses, but is there therapy? I mean, when you're talking home care, sometimes people need... Uh, uh, occupation therapy, getting dressed, help get dressed. Do right. they do so, that? So, so a typical, I'll give you a, a typical example might be that uh, somebody who's um, aging that might also have some Alzheimer's or, or dementia, something like that, they may need assistance throughout the day or at certain times of the day to make sure that they're safe. So like right. we, we might go in in the morning to help somebody who is going to help them get up get bathed, get dressed, you know, make sure they take their medications, make sure that they're set for the day that they're eating. um, And then they're okay the rest of the day, or we might be there all day, right, to make sure that they're safe. So what we do is um, I have a, a, we have nurse oversight on all of our cases. Okay. okay? We have an RN that, uh, that goes out and assesses our client and works with the family. And what we do is we look at the 24 hour day in, in terms of the type of assistance that someone needs. So what I was just describing, someone might, might be most at risk of falling or not being able to do certain activities of daily living um, in the morning. So maybe we have someone come out in the morning, they're okay during the day, right? and then we might have someone come back in the, in the evening to help them kind of re- reverse the process. Right. But we also have situations where we're with people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, we might be with people just overnight, uh, individuals. To, and, and a lot of it, the whole thing centers around safety. When you think about it, people would not be calling Bright Star um, if their family member, their loved one, their child, uh, you know, husband, spouse, if they were safe in the environment that they're in. So if that could be that they need assistance while that, that family member is there because they don't know how to take care of them. It could also be that that family member may not be there. Maybe they're still working. Right. Maybe uh, they live away from them and they need someone to be checking in on somebody take, you know, and making sure that they're, they're doing what they need to be doing so to keep them safe. Um, so we know when somebody calls us that they're calling us for a reason. Right. You know, it, it, they've got some problem or issue with a, with a family member or a loved one that they need some assistance with. And home care can be temporary or long-term. So if somebody has a, an accident or an injury or a long-term illness, if it's accident or injury, they, they could, we might be with them for a few days after they've gotten discharged from a hospital. We could be with them for a few weeks. It could be a few months. There, we have had some clients that we were with them for years. Right. Okay. So it's, uh, it's kind of all across the, all across the board, even from, Recovery to unfortunately, we work with uh, a lot of family members, um, their loved ones when they're on hospice. Right. And uh, it's unfortunate, but what, what 
what happens is that they're it, having us involved as a home care agency to help assist and take care of their loved one, you know, bathing them and dressing them and things like that when they're in a hospice situation, it allows that them people or those, those individuals to come home right. and be at home instead of being in a facility. Well, so. and it also, because I know my sister was in hospice and was at home, mm -hmm. it keeps them in that familiar setting. And exactly. when they come in, it kind of relieves, like her husband could get a little breathing room that someone else was taking care of her at the time and making sure she got medicines and he might have been able to take a break. Right. Because it, they do need a break at times. Yeah. I, what I, the way I like to refer to it is it allows us coming in, allows the family to be family, daughter to be a daughter and son to be a son, that type of thing. Because, you know, otherwise they are the caregiver. Yeah. And, and a lot yep. of times, and you've heard, probably heard this before, that um, it, it takes a lot of toll on, a, on people mm -hmm. who are the caregivers, especially if it's over a long period of time. So, so and another thing you mentioned is, is giving someone a break. You know, we work in conjunction with the family schedule. So if family members are there at certain times or on the weekends, we're there, we, we might work it out. So we're there when they're not there. Right. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a, our effort is really a combination of whatever is needed uh, in conjunction with the family to take care of their loved one as long as possible. And if they recover, which a lot of times they do, they'll call us up and say, you know, uh, mom's doing a lot better now. Maybe we were with her for a couple months after she had some sort of an episode. And, uh, and I think we don't, we don't need, need your services anymore. She's, she's gotten better. Right. That's great. Yeah. Well, and you have some type of overseer that, you know, is there to figure out what type of plan they need. And that's probably discussed at the beginning that, you know, we'll see how long. If they're getting better, then you let us know and, you know. Right. So, so our you communicate. Uh, the, yeah, the nurse that goes out and does the assessment stays in touch with the family right. and the individual. We go out and reassess them from time to time, and then as they get uh, get better, the plan of care that we put together needs to change. Yes, it changes. It can get it can increase or it can decrease. So it's always a good thing when people recover and it goes from where we were there twelve twenty four hours a day to twelve hours eight hours and a couple hours and then right. and they don't need us anymore. Um, but. Uh, and, and a couple of things we do, which are different than some other agencies, in addition to having, most of your agencies do not have skilled nurses on staff, um, which we do, but we also do what we, what we call short shifts or visits. So even if someone just needs us for like a two hour visit, um, they, we can do that. So a lot of agencies will say, well, we'll provide you services, but um, it's a minimum of four hours every time we come out or a minimum of so many hours per week. We don't operate that way. Um, our, our smallest increment is two hours. And so what that means is, so if somebody needs assistance, say they're at risk or they're a fall risk, and they are, all they're interested in is having someone there to assist them when they take a shower a couple times a week or whatever it might be, um, they can have us come in every other day for two hours, assist them with that activity, and then, and then be done. And uh, there's no requirement to have a certain number of hours per week. So do like they that. do, like, um, if they need help getting the laundry or, yeah. or fixing a meal, those types of services are done also? Or? Yeah, so there, home care um, for the senior-based senior, senior -based home care is definitely two types. There's medical and non-medical uh -huh. type assistance. What would be considered more medical is hands-on care, where you're actually helping them. Yeah, helping them, assisting them in the shower or, or actually doing it, um, helping them get dressed, you know, and, and really do putting hands-on care, um, medication reminders and things like that. And then the, uh, the other side of it is, is that when someone's going to be in the home, let's say they're there for eight hours and they are, or six hours or whatever it might be, their job is to, to um, provide value in, in other areas. So other areas might be, yes, they are helping them with some laundry because they're no longer able to carry the laundry down downstairs right. to, to, to get the laundry done. It might be that it is to cook some meals. It might be that, uh, you know, as you, on a normal course of your day, you clean up the kitchen after you've cooked something or you clean your bathroom or you pick up things in the house, you do some vacuuming. They're not maids, 
Right. But they would do the exact same thing that anyone would do in their home in terms of picking up and the, the normal activities in terms of cleaning things up. So cleaning up a bathroom, making a bed, changing bed linens, things like that. So we're, we're big on the fact that a majority of what we do is privately paid for unless they have long-term care insurance. Okay, okay. so, but, but a lot of it is privately paid for. So, you know, you think about it, we go into people's homes, tremendous amount of responsibility to be in somebody else's home, especially for hours at a time. Right. Well, you know, if, if I'm going to have someone come into my house and they're going to be for, there for six or eight hours, they're not babysitting my mom. They're basically assisting her. Right. But then they're also providing other value in the house while they're there, which could be the laundry and the meals and what I just described before. So there has to, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's an, a value to the whole service, not just mom's okay by the time I leave. It's mom's okay, but other stuff got everything, done. Everything, a lot of other stuff got done. And think about it if. And if, that's hard because yeah. we used to assist my mother in law. And when we'd go, you know, we had a set time Thursday evenings to go down and dust and vacuum and help her. She wanted to sit and talk. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's and right. that's hard. You got, you got to be bold enough to, uh, we need to get this laundry done now. I, uh, you know. Well, and, and, it, but there's a companionship yeah. part of it that, that, the aides provide also in that some of these individuals are home alone a lot and they mm -hmm. do want to have that time to, to talk and converse and, and that type of stuff. So you, um, my feeling about it is, is that if they're going to be, our aides are going to be in your home, then we need to, they need to be doing whatever it is that's going to make that situation beneficial, even if it's for the family. Right. If, if your mother-in-law lived with you and you were not home, you know, I would expect them to be providing value in the home so, so that when you come home, you say, oh, well, this is great. Not only is she taking care of mom, but she's also helping me out, you know, by getting by, that, right. by, by getting some of these things done that, that, uh, that provides value to me, not just them. Can you give us information as far as telephone number, where you're located, website, any of that? Yeah, we actually, we've been in business for nine years and uh, in our 10th year right now, we have three locations. Uh, one is in Crofton, in Annapolis area. Mm -hmm. It services Anne Arundel and Prince George County. We have another one in uh, Easton, which uh, covers every, everywhere from Dorchester County up to the bridge, Queen Anne's County. And then I have another office in Salisbury that goes uh, uh, from Easton to, uh, well, Dorchester County to, um, to Ocean City. So everywhere from Ocean City to uh, Glen Burnie County. to, uh, yeah. you know, so we're, we're pretty, we're pretty uh, regionally based, um, but uh, in, in the, with the three offices, but uh, like I said, we have a really good reputation, and, uh, and we do a lot of things that other home care companies don't do. Um, we also provide staffing to, to facilities, so we have a lot of staff on, 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 within our company. So if you're talking about nurses' aides and nurses, we have probably... Out of the Anne Arundel office, there's probably 100, 110 Easton office, about the same number, and about 50 or 60 out of Salisbury. So what we do with those aides and those, that staff, certain facilities like assisted livings in school systems, things like that, uh, they can't hire all the staff that they need, medical staff. So we actually provide them staff. Oh. So, so we actually, so for like Talbot County Schools, Dorchester Schools, um, we actually provide them nurses to, in some cases, take children to school and things like that. So there's a lot of different things that we, that we do. But by doing that, we have a lot of staff, which allows us to take care of a lot of individuals when they come at the spur of the moment. Like when people get discharged from a hospital mm -hmm. or a rehab on a Friday afternoon, which they always seem to be discharged yeah. on a Friday afternoon yeah. <laughs> um, at 5 o'clock. Um, if someone calls us up and says, hey, my mom's getting discharged and they're telling me I need 24-hour care, um, can you start in a, in a, you know, an hour or two, we can say, yeah, we can do that. Because wow. we, we have, we have right. the, 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 the that ability to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is there a telephone number they can call? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, the, the, probably the best way, I'll give you the one in the middle, <laughs> which is the Easton office. Okay. Um, it's 410-820-4200. And uh, that's the Easton office. But all of our offices are connected. If you call one office, uh, it actually rings in all three and, and we, we, we don't miss any calls related to that. Um, 
there is one thing I did want to yes, bring up. Yeah, I know you, you mentioned the senior solution <laughs> education. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the reason I, want, I wanted to bring that up is that um, as an organization, we are very uh, involved in community education. Okay, so we do a lot of educating the public, educating our families, educating facilities and their staff. Um, so we've come up with this concept of senior solutions uh, a while back, and we have four or five different programs that, that we provide. Uh, the most, probably the, the, the one that we do the most, which is the most impact on, on a lot of different people, is uh, something called the Virtual Dementia Tour. And we've been doing this for a while. In fact, we have some people doing it right now at, a, at an assisted living in Easton for their staff and their families mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 uh, that have loved ones there. What it is, is a, um, it's a program where it's either one to two hour program, but it, but it allows us to bring people into our, our office and or set it up in their facility, um, an environment where people can actually experience what it's like for a brief amount of time, six to eight minutes only, okay. um, what it's like to have Alzheimer's or dementia. And you do that by kind of impairing some of your senses, eyes and Oh, ears, see, now headphones. we did that with the student. When okay. we had service learning to mm -hmm. do for the state, you okay. had so many service learning hours. Mm -hmm. And our service learning project was to have the children present something to the senior center. So we would have the senior center bring the people in and for the students to understand what some of them were going through, we put Vaseline on the glasses, right, right. We, we'd put things in their ears so that they could experience, you know, when you go to talk to this person, they may not be able to hear you with a light right. voice. You may have to speak up, you right. know, and and dexterity putting on gloves and trying to pick things up so right. that they could see what a senior experience is losing some of that senses that you have so we do it i think um it's a i don't know the, the program that you use but the one we use is is sec, is by second wind dreams it's a it's a, a doctor put it together it's called the virtual dementia tour and it is all those things plus some additional things and like in our office in anne arundel and in easton we actually have a permanent, what we call virtual dementia room set up. Okay. And then when they go in, um, they are garbed up with those different things you mentioned to kind of impair their senses. And then what happens is an observer is in there and they'll ask them to do five activities and then not give them any more help. And they're in there for six to eight minutes or so. And then when they're done, we have a group discussion. Mm -hmm. Everyone kind of waits around until we get everybody through it. And we have a group discussion about, um, how they felt while they were in there, how it relates to, you know, either their mom or dad or, you know, and, and uh, if it's a, care, a professional caregiver, um, they're immediately relating to people that they've taken care of or are taking care of. Um, but I can tell you that every time we do it, it's amazing. It's, uh, it impacts every person that goes through it because they really walk out of it and say, like, like my gosh, I had no idea yeah. that, that Miss yeah. Smith was that was anything near that was what was going on. And, um, and it really helps our caregivers as well as the ones that we train, you know, how to, to get a better experience uh, of really truly what's happening versus just telling them what it is like they can actually experience it. So their level of empathy and compassion obviously goes up. And uh, so we do that. We've been doing that around actually for the last year uh, across, the, across the shore. So how often is that often? Well, right now we've um, we're offering it uh, at least once a month in each of our offices. Okay. Okay. But we, in between times, we're and there's multiple times because it, it's like we'll set up sessions, maybe a couple sessions in a week. That'll be, but now, so how does once, someone find out about that? Do they go on? Does the website have? It, it's not going to be on the website, but if you if you make that phone call to any one of our offices, and I'll, again, you know, the Anne Arundel office is four one zero six nine seven three five two seven. Mm-hmm. And uh, Easton is 410-820-4200. Uh, and uh, we don't have it set up yet in Salisbury. So what we're doing a lot right now is we just partnered with like um, Bailey Chase a, mm -hmm. a month or so ago and invited their families and their staff in, in, in to do it. 
and uh, and we're also working with uh, with a lot of other facilities. And so, so well, there's we, we a lot of facilities around. Yeah, and I we mean, we did one with the with the senior center. And and recently. we need we need more. I mean, there there are folks that are on a list yeah. for housing that. You know, it's just too much to be in a home anymore, and they'd like to get into a small apartment, still be independent. Yep. But we've got a, a list that's... So, so the, the reason that we are... Virtual Dementia Tour is one piece of it, but the other side of, of it, the reason that we're doing as much education in the community as we are is that uh, you know, what, we've learned, what I've learned over the past nine or ten years is that individuals, family, myself, you know, people who have to take care of their loved ones uh, as they age and things like that. You know, it, it's just like getting married or having having a child. There is no manual. You have to just you just live through it, and people you're just kind of trying to figure it out. So we actually have programs like the Virtual Dementia Tour, other things like talking, training people more classroom type setting of of Alzheimer's and dementia. Another one that's related to aging in place, which talks about you know. A way to, ways to use home care when it's right when it's not right you know what to expect and all that kind of stuff so our goal is really to 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 educate being that involved in educating the community as much as we can so that that's what senior solutions is and and i mean as a daughter of a mother that's in her 80s and she uses a walker she uses a cane sometimes we take the scooter it all depends on what's expected of that senior you know, I, I usually try to ask her, would you rather use this or that? And we talk about, you know, like when we went to Easton and went to Target, are you going to be okay walking, you know, with the cart to have that to lean on mm -hmm. or do you need something else? I mean, those are decisions that seniors make all the time and you have to decide what's going to work for you. Is this something that I might be able to? To benefit from and use services from you or right you know that type of thing yeah. it, it um and sometimes you don't you, you may not want to ask them you may want to lead them in a certain direction yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that, uh, Mom, that I you're think getting the answer that they better. probably need to have yeah i think um, it would be better if yeah, you used yeah. the there you go that that, <laughs> that uh that might be a, that's a good way to do it sometimes but so you know our our goal across this region is to uh provide high quality home care, educate the public about, you know, how to take care of their loved ones and, uh, and, and be there when they need us. And hopefully when they don't, we can go away. If they need us again, we can come back. Right. Right. Yep. Well, we thank you for being thank a you. sponsor at the summit and hopefully thank people you. will come out and stop by your booth and say, hi, will you be there? Um, I or will probably, I'll probably stop by there, but, uh, Christina Wingate Spence and, uh, Wendy Traff Barrow, they, they have three names on both of them, uh, but they'll, they'll both be there for sure. Okay. And uh, when you stop by, they can talk to you more about our specific services and uh, where and when and how all that works. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. Friday, May 18th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Queen Anne's County 4-H Park. Woo!